The ultimate irony of COD Esports is that all great teams are headed toward the same thing, catastrophic failure. No matter how long their reign or the number of years hard graft it took to get them there, the one constant of every top roster is that their journey will eventually end in fire, brimstone, and Twitter spats. We've previously delved into two of the best known examples, Fariko Impact and Complexity, the first two COD dynasties, but there have been an infinite number of other teams that have spawned, fought their way to being known as one of the best, and then erupted in flames. And then there's Optic, the one constant, always there or thereabouts, the same cluster of players, ever popular, even in defeat, maybe even more so than in victory. This is the final chapter of Deserto's series about the three great dynasties of Call of Duty. This time, it's about Optic Gaming's multiple years at the top, a reign as long and winding as a forest stroll. But kickstarting any dynasty involves making some tough choices. Here, it was this. Ian Crimzix Porter, a great player, but was he a fit for the green wall? Once upon a time, Optic seemed destined to forever trundle along. As Fariko and then Complexity took the COD world by storm, the Green Wool were always there or thereabouts. A silver medal here, a third place there, even the occasional championship. But at the dawn of Advanced Warfare, despite the steady captaincy of Nadeshot and the slaying quality of Skump, they'd only had one event win since Modern Warfare 3 two years prior. Rumors began to swirl that the optic powers that be felt about ready to change that, and in November 2014 it was confirmed, as they made the contentious decision to sign Crimzix. What's up guys? Just thrown out the gaming, third day of playing, already won a tournament, I'm gonna go do Snow Angels. Crimzix wasn't a particularly controversial figure in and of himself, but he'd broken the hearts of Optics fans time and time again over the years. He was also ruthless, in a way that went against Optics, Gamer Mates Next Door branding. At the peak of the Complexity Dynasty, he'd also been part of the decision to replace Clayster, who happened to now play for Optic with the volatile Karma. The fans' greatest worry was that Optic was losing its way, particularly as it was the ever-popular Clayster that the Crimbot was replacing. Formal was brought in too, in place of Proofy, and Optic picked yet further at the bones of the departing evil geniuses, drafting Teep and the unpredictable Karma into B-Team Optic Nation. This is Clayster bringing you a YouTube video just talking about, you know, my release uh, from Optic Gaming. Uh, basically, they told me I was I was off the team uh, that I needed to, that they wanted to take a different direction in the team. And they wouldn't tell me who or why, they just said they wanted to change. Because, you know, if it wasn't working, it wasn't working. If you need to change the scenery, you need to change the scenery. Yo, what up, guys? We are going to be talking about Optic Gaming roster changes. We have Release, Proofy, and Clayster. The two players that we replace them with is actually Crim6 and Formal. Personally, I would like to welcome to the team. There are premier and high caliber players that it, you never come across, and if you have a chance to team with them, you do. Optic were taking a calculated risk. Win some tournaments, any disgruntled fans would quickly jump back on board, but keep drifting with less popular players, and the org risked muddying their unique selling point, the powerful bond they shared with their own fan base. With a distinct whiff of mutiny in the air, getting the fans back on side was priority number one. Fortunately, Advanced Warfare started well. The online tournament win that Crimzix was celebrating came just days after he and Formal had joined the team. But online success counted for nothing compared to the real deal, and the first offline event of the season fell in November 2014, the MLG Columbus Open. The fans were well accustomed to Nadeshot and Skump's charisma, but Crimzix's steely resolve turned out to be pretty entertaining as well when it was your team he was repping. Nothing could phase the guy, a great asset for an org of a reputation for falling at the final hurdle. Formal was equally impressive, hyped as one of the best slayers in the game while with Envy, and so far proving it. So one event together, and one second place. It was Optic's best result since Anaheim five months prior. To some fans, the org was still on the naughty step, but a few more results like this, and even the most stubborn supporters would start to see the light. 2v2. I lost purple roof! Nice, Seth. Purple roof! Purple roof. Purple roof. Nice! Oh, it's got to be nice, nice job, Seth. That was oh, huge. Oh, god, dude. Holy fuck. This kid's a god. Good shit. Yeah, nice go. job, Seth. For real. Good shit. They'd have to wait two more months to see if the form would continue. It was now January 2015, and the players had used the break to stream and upload to YouTube as much as they possibly could. But now it was game time. UMG Orlando and the fans hoped that the team would put in another performance to warm their hearts in the winter weather. 
for the so-called God Squad Optic had put together, things were getting very real. This was the org's first win at an event with a prize pool since December 2012, when Skump and Nadeshot won the inaugural Black Ops 2 LAN with Big Timer and Merc. No one ever complains when you're winning, and Crimzix and Formal were enjoying their sudden surge in popularity. Even Nadeshot, who'd always flittered between being a pro gamer and a straight-up personality, was proving he just about had the talent to lead a championship winning team. We're gonna hand it to Optic Gaming as they are your UMG Orlando champions. The good times were just getting started. The next two events saw Optic nab a hat-trick of tournament wins, with a $30,000 prize at the MLG Pro League Season 1 playoffs, followed by victory at the NA World Championship playoffs. So in March 2015, heading into Advanced Warfare's World Championships, Optic were North America's top seed and had parked themselves firmly at the top of the power rankings. For the players, the objective here was to perform among the pressure, ride the momentum, play like they knew they could. Do that, win a World Championship, and they would become immortal. Fail, they'd be branded choke artists by the hordes of hipsters who took pleasure in hating them. Let's see what Formal's able to do now as he picked up one kill. Can he make it two? Nice shooting out of him as he was able to take out Lawless. Formal making it one more, and that's three down. Group stages, perfection. Three wins from three. But fate threw a curveball, and their first knockout game would be against a team that had more motivation to beat them than anyone else at the tournament. They were drawn against Denial Esports, whose best player was a man named Clayster. Clayster then had Infinite Warfare's last laugh. Denial would go on to win it all, and while he was democratic towards Optic in his post-game interview, you know I have a lot of respect for OG, the players, the organization, the fans. I love Optic. Uh, you know I was on it for almost a full year. Uh, it just finally feels good to beat the team that dropped me. The middle finger he'd metaphorically shoved in their direction by beating them would end the weekend with a championship ring around it. As for Optic, despite a decent lower bracket run, they were eventually humbled by Phase Red. Phase elated on the other side. It is official. Optic Gaming has been knocked out of the 2015 Call of Duty Championships. This second defeat was just as personal as their loss to Denial. Aix, Phase's captain, Crimzix's former teammate, and Optic's kryptonite took immense pleasure in being the one to drop the guillotine. <laughs> Playing them this early, honestly, I didn't want to do it, but uh, I wanted it to be grand finals, but I mean, beating them here was just as, as good. Uh, I told Krim uh, when EG split up that I would beat him where it matters, and then I won Columbus, and uh, going into this match, it was like, um, this is for, I think, top six, so putting him in eighth place. Um, I, I, gave him, I gave him three events in the past, in the past few months, and uh, I told him this event was the one that mattered, and I'd beat him here, so. Felt really good to do it, and especially in the fashion that we did in the 3-0, and it was kind of a, a whomping after game one, so um, definitely, definitely something I'm really proud of. Optic restored some pride of a nervy 3-2 victory over TK to secure seventh place, but losing to Clayster and then Aix was too much to handle for a fan base that had become rather accustomed to winning. The supporters, desperate for someone to blame, demanded the captain fall on his sword. He soon gave them what they wanted. I am going to be taking a break from competitive Call of Duty, a leave of absence, if you will. And the reason why I'm calling it a break or a leave of absence and not retirement is because I'm very confident that I will be revisiting my competitive roots and continue to compete in the next Call of Duty title. They needn't have been so pushy. Nadeshot knew he was leaving the second he left that stage. But with two months until the season continued with ESWC 2015, an emergency substitute was needed. Karma still languishing in Optic Nation, was the number one choice, but dreaded visa issues meant a plan B was in order. In came Enabel as a temp, a future superstar who, ironically, would one day represent Nadeshot's 100 Thieves. He was also a Halo Esports alumni who knew Crimzix and Formal from the good old days of Master Chief, but more importantly, he was part of the Phase Red team that knocked Optic out of COD Champs. If you'd offered Optic a battling loss ahead of ESWC 2015, they'd probably have taken it. In trying circumstances, any performance that returned at least some of the momentum they'd lost at the World Champs would have been seen as a win. But in reality, they ended up with so much more.
play just once more before returning to phase, but it'd be another good one. First place yet again, at Gfinity Spring Masters in London. While Enable had done everything asked of him and more, these two events are still mere footnotes in both parties' history. With the ship well and truly steadied, it was time for the nuclear warhead himself, Damon Karma Barlow. And Karma's time in the wilderness, it seemed, had humbled him. Hey, what's up guys, Karma? I'm the new guy in town. If you didn't know, Nade Shot stepped down and I took his spot, but I am extremely excited to be a part of Optic Gaming and be their new fourth. Hopefully this is the beginning of a very, very long run, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys. Already a two-time world champion, Karma had played a key role in both the Fariko and Complexity dynasties, and walked into a team on the verge of a legacy of its own. Despite the world championship failure, Optic had won five of the seven events in the Advanced Warfare season so far, and finished second in another. He'd been chosen to keep that run going, and eventually get Optic the COD World Champs the org so desperately craved. But the next World Champs were over half a season away, not to mention a brand new COD game. There were still seven events left in Advanced Warfare, and it was time to start winning them. Five months later, on the dawn of Advanced Warfare's final LAN, Optic had emerged victorious from three events, and with silver medals from the three others. Advanced Warfare belonged to the Green Wall, of that there was no doubt. But season closer, the MLG World Finals, had a $100,000 top prize. Glory here would be the exclamation mark at the end of the sentence that decreed them the best team the era had to offer. Throughout the entire event, through pool play, the winner's bracket, the playoffs, the grand final, Optic didn't drop a series. In fact, they barely lost a game. The Optic dynasty would carry on, but no other season in the Orcs history would match this extraordinary level of consistency. Optic Gaming has done it again, Ben. Best in the game, Optic Gaming. We're going back to Black Ops 3. Black Ops 2, you were incredible at. Anything you want to say to the competition out there heading into that game, Watch out. No, I think we're going to dominate. On November 6th, 2015, the community welcomed Black Ops 3. Those outside the Green Wall would have prayed they'd start struggling, and the season opener would have given false hope. Everything going well for Optic Gaming as they're looking to close out this game and start oh the series. At UMG South Carolina, Amid a deluge of technical issues and an awkward single elimination format, Optic could only muster fifth place. But a massive four event win streak would follow. They finished first at the NACWL Stage 1 playoffs, the Crown Melbourne Invitational, ESWC 2016, and finally the MLG Anaheim Open, picking up over 125,000 US dollars during the period. Any disappointments, like only making top 8 at the CWL Stage 2 playoffs, just delayed the inevitable, as they blew through the competition at the subsequent MLG Orlando Open to pick up a healthy 40k top prize, only dropping a single series the entire tournament, 3-2 to Envy in the Grand Finals, before sweeping them aside in the bracket reset. The World Championships had now moved to the end of the season, and once again, Optic were the dominant force going into them. They'd won five of the seven Black Ops 3 events, and any analyst, hell, any casual viewer, would have told you that this was the World Championships that Optic were meant to win. But we'd been here before. They choked on the biggest stage last year, and it had cost them their captain. This time, though, they were even stronger. Vast improvements were expected. When Optic fans have nightmares, they think of aches. Always watching, lurking around every corner, waiting for the green wall to reach the cusp of glory, and then, only then, reaching out to pounce. This World Championships, Optic's run-up had been more stuttered. They'd fallen to complexity in groups, and gone into the winner's bracket with a 2-1 record. From there, they'd been immediately felled by Envy, who'd go on to raise the trophy. Once again, 
a lower bracket run would have to follow, and wins against Infused and Luminosity led them right where Aix wanted them, towards the sky-blue quicksand of Cloud9, into a Game 5 that he'd have had no doubts from the beginning he'd end up winning. For Optic, an unwanted top 8 finish. For Aix, yet another opportunity to be the bad guy. Not gonna get traded out as well. Karma doesn't get the second. Player coming to challenge over top. Bortle's gonna be able to help him out. Karma going for the kill. Bortle up to you. 1v1 situation. It's all coming over. Oh! And it's full. Way to go. 1v1. Optic Gaming. We will see a budging later. C9 able to clutch up in the end. And what a performance that was. All the way Ladies down to the gentlemen. AR battle. If that is going to be it. Congratulations, C9. Aix, two god champs, back to back, takes down the green wall. Meet the newest and most recent villains of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, led by none other than Aix. The chance for the perfect season had once more slipped through Optic's fingers. This time, there was no nade shot to blame, no charismatic figure to soak up the fans' disappointment. The team would have to introspect, hit up the drawing board, and come back stronger next season. They now had three months to prepare for Infinite Warfare. When the curtain raised on the Infinite Warfare season, Optic will have been well aware of their new tag as a team full of chokers. Doesn't matter how many small achievements you have, it's the massive failures that'll stick in people's minds. Perhaps then, it was a good omen that they started relatively slowly. Managing just one second place in the opening two events before their first tournament win at the CWL Paris Open. They followed that up with another first place finish a month later at the Dallas Open. For Optic at least, the Infinite Warfare season was one of fewer, larger events, meaning each tournament they entered had weight. Despite the season going well enough, fourth place at the CWL Pro League Stage 1, followed by only making top 8 at the Anaheim Open, suggested that, while they were far from washed up, their dynasty was winding down. They'd had a good run, but everything just seemed to be drifting away. Optic would turn up to events, the crowd would sing their name, and sometimes they'd win. Where Farico and Complexity had gone out with a bang, Optic appeared to be reaching their equilibrium. The second largest event of the season would give them a chance to prove their mettle. They were drawn into Group Green in Stage 2 of the 2017 Global Pro League, which came just a couple of weeks before the World Championships and had a top prize of over $200,000. In a group with Epsilon, Envy, and Aix's Cloud9, most people thought that Optic would reach the top two. But such was their stuttering form, not everyone was convinced. Optic's kind of been struggling the past few events, even online, I know in their scrims they haven't been doing as good, so I'd say us and Epsilon probably. Any doubters would be proven wrong, with Optic making it through to the winner's bracket in first, with six wins and no losses. But defeat to EU United in the winner's semis would see them drop to the loser's bracket, where they'd fight their way to an EU United rematch in the loser's finals. It would be a slog, but they'd make it, setting up a grand finals of Team Envy, whom they'd already beaten twice in group play. If they could force this bracket reset and win the event, Optic would go into the World Championships knowing that their dynasty era was still alive and well. Here it is, they get the kills, everyone dead, Optic Gaming! Your CWL Stage 2 Global Pro League Champions. Looking more relieved than overjoyed, Optic basked in the return of their fear factor. With the World Championships up next, perhaps the last time this increasingly inconsistent team would be among the favourites to win one, they couldn't have got their mojo back at a better time. The August 2017 World Championships was the first in three years where Optic were not expected to blow away any and all opposition. But the Pro League victory had shown they were still one of the big boys. The question on everyone's lips, would this be the season where they'd finally show up when it mattered? Once again, Optic had set themselves up for a grand finals against Team Envy. And once again, they'd need to force a bracket reset to defeat them. words of courage, Optic had broken the curse. Their dynasty 
fulfilled, it would prove to be their final push, the rest of the competition catching up in the World War II season. But it didn't really matter. Optic had been at the top of the game longer than anybody ever had before, probably longer than anyone else ever will. They'd won it all, and more importantly for them than anyone else, they'd done it with the fans on their side. The rain may have trailed away somewhat compared to Fariko and complexity, but it also had the only things those others were missing, longevity and a relatively happy ending. I'd like to say congratulations on behalf of Infinity Ward and Activision. You guys deserve it. You deserve every dollar. Massive congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 Call of Duty World League Champions, Optic Gaming. Give it up one more time. Skump, Crimsix, and Karma still represent Optic to this day, right at the top followed by swarms of fans that no longer expect them to win every event, but can still be forgiven for hoping that they'll be there when Optic does still win, as they did at the opening events of the Black Ops 4 season. Their dynasty is now over, but Optic have kept the one thing they've fought so hard to keep above all else. In the COD scene at least, they're still loved, and ironically, a big part of that is down to keeping their core roster of Skump, Karma, and the Crimbot. This has been a Deserto mini-series about the three great dynasties in Call of Duty history. We'd love to know your thoughts on which one was most impressive for its time. Was it Fariko, who ushered in a new era of Call of Duty, Complexity, who perfected the theories Fariko brought to the table, or, most recently, Optic, who dug in their heels, kept on fighting, and refused to fade away, even when many thought they'd missed their chance? Let us know what you think in the comments. Otherwise, as ever, Thank you for watching.